Hey everyone, welcome to Holistic Lifestyle Tips, Getting Real About the Woo Woo. I'm Becky Russell, owner of wellness company Hope Essential, and I am an essential oil educator and a holistic lifestyle educator. I just love to teach, and I feel compelled to share my journey of holistic living in the hopes that it will benefit others as well as me. Uh, I did not have... Um, role models of how to age well with the quality of life, and they didn't know anything different. So I chose to try the holistic path, and it served me well. I'll be 63 with no uh, daily medications and, and or prescriptions, and that's unheard of in my family. And with my genes, that's really unheard of. So um, I... Feel very blessed it's been a lot of hard work and the hard work's not over that's what we're going to talk about tonight but um i just feel there's so much here that people need to know they're not aware of and i just want to share that knowledge so uh just want to start today with a confession so if you don't know me very well i'm going to confess something that may surprise you I am very selfishly motivated. I'm a very empathetic person and, and loving, um, but I'm very selfishly motivated. So all of this, the holistic lifestyle tips, the, the educational things about gut health and the oils, it's all really based on reminders I need for myself. Um, and then I also have that obligation in me the responsibility uh, strength of you know sharing what what could be beneficial to someone else but at the root if it didn't interest me if it didn't have anything to do with me I doubt I would be doing what I do so the owning a wellness company is so wonderful because anytime I'm reminding someone else about a healthy habit or um, different things they can do to be healthy it's a reminder for me as well. I've recently started teaching a monthly uh, balancing your blood sugar uh, naturally class. Every time I teach that, it's reminding me that these are things I need to do. So the reason I am talking to you tonight is a follow-up from a previous uh, video where I was interviewing you and challenging you to not fall into the trap of, of letting 2020 defeat you, that you're just going to give up now and let the rest of the year play out, not make any kind of changes for the better and just let it win and start over in 2021. And I reminded you last week about why that's a bad idea. And in the back of my mind, I know that part of that was I was waiting on blood labs res results for myself. And I have not had them done in, gosh, um, maybe a year because of COVID. So when I would have normally had them done, um, it was in the middle of all that. So I don't normally wait that long for blood labs because I like to stay on top of things. But the uh, situation was different. And then you add stress eating and just being home so much. And I did not, I knew I was in trouble. And I wanted to know how bad. And I'm not the type that buries my head in the sand. I want facts. And then I will typically go on attack. So um, that's, that's a little not always good because sometimes you're throwing everything at something and you don't know what works. But in this case, attack is good because my blood labs were horrible, um, except for two things that were very surprising. My um, A1C was fine, um, and that's not always the case. And I did not, my um, insulin fasting number was good which surprised me. So I'm doing something right, and I know that, but um, 
high, high cholesterol, and that's not acceptable with my genetics. Well, for anyone, but especially for me, because it won't take much to push me into the pre-diabetic um, marker. So don't want to go there. I'm already farther along than I want to be, but I do not feel hopeless. I do not feel defeated. Um, I know what I need to do. Most of us know what we need to do to be healthy. It's just hard and um, it can be lonely and isolating, especially now. So I want to encourage you, let you know I'm in the battles with you. I'm in the trenches and I've not always, I always have been, but I haven't always, um, you know, it hasn't always been as personal. So I'm letting you know that um, I, I messed up over the summer, over the fall. I'm, I ate too much fast food that doesn't even taste good anymore, but it was either convenient or I don't know, just, I just did. And, um, you know, it, it takes, it, it adds up. So if that can happen since January to where my numbers are that bad to go through two more months of not doing anything positive, that hole is going to be extremely deep for me to dig out of if I don't start making some changes right now. So I would love to know, um, you know, and you typically know what things you need to work on, but in my um, balancing blood sugar class, um, there are things I go over. There are four things that everyone needs to do to be healthy. That's no matter what you're dealing with, four things. So comment below if any of these are challenges for you. Sleep. Sleep is so, so important. I am determined to get my numbers back to normal. It's not just about diet. Other things have to be balanced as well. If I am not getting enough sleep, that means I'm producing more cortisol, which increases that belly fat. That is not good. So better and enough sleep is super important. Do you struggle with sleep? Because I have an oil for that. There are several oils and different um, steps that you can take. It's not just one thing. It's not just oils that are going to help you sleep better. You have to turn the devices off and so forth. But that's a struggle for me, so I can definitely share what has helped for me. So reach out to me if that's something you need help with. Number two, stress. These times are very challenging, but let's face it, this could go on for a while. We need to get a grip. We need to have coping skills and we cannot just let it keep eating at us. We have to have tools that are going to help us. And I truly believe our emotional wellness is the most important thing, even over physical, because if you are not in the right mindset, if you are not emotionally healthy, then you are not going to care about working out or eating healthy or even getting out of bed. So if that means you need to do um, online therapy, do it. If that means you need regular breaks with your, you know, go walk on the weekends with your girlfriend or whatever it is, do it. You need to protect your emotional wellness and practice that self-care and stay. We're always going to have stress, but we need the proper tools. I love taking Epsom salt baths um, with the oils that calm my brain and my body. Um, that is something I do for me. And, um, sometimes, you know, the Hallmark movie or something. So just whatever it is, make sure you've got pockets of self-care, joy, things in there for your emotional wellness. Do not try to handle everything on your own. There are oils that can help with mood and, um, you know, just, and stress. So reach out to me if that is something that you are struggling with. Um, gut health, you know, that's my my thing, my, you know, I'm going to hammer away at that. That is so important. Um, inflammation, anything autoimmune, um, the 
depression actually can act start in the gut. If you have poor gut health, you are not creating enough dopamine and serotonin and all those hormones we need for good emotional health. So the gut health is just huge for everything. So um, I have a whole list of things that I use for my gut health, whether it's, um, you know, I don't have white sugar or white flour in my house. Um, there's now I have an occasional treat outside, but, um, and I make treats with healthier substitutes, but um, it's just not in the house. And um, I'm to the point now though, that like my husband loves pop tarts. I, I don't, unless it's a super, super stress thing, that doesn't even appeal to me. So um, I can say no to that kind of stuff. Um, but I have to have my healthy versions of things. So um, gut health, super, super important. And then, um, and of course that's gonna be very important to me to try to get my numbers down. And then your immune system, especially now, we need to really focus on strengthening our immune system because like I said, this we don't know how long this is going to go on. And even if they said January 1st, this, this COVID will be gone, that doesn't mean you don't need to worry about your immune system. There's the regular flu that has killed thousands and thousands of people through the years. There's cardio problems. There's diabetes. There's all sorts of illnesses that um, are not helped at all by a weak immune system. So um, we need, and what's in store? We don't know what other future things that are gonna come down, you know, as far as viruses. We have got to take our health more seriously and we cannot rely on chemical filled things that, um, you know, the, the, how many hand sanitizers have been recalled because of the chemicals in them. Um, that's why I love anything if I can get it through doTERRA, I do, because I trust their quality. So I use the OnGuard hand sanitizer. Kills the germs, does not leave my hands dry. It's a boost to my immune system every time I use it. So um, we've got to get into that mindset of, you know, alternatives to the harsh chemicals and so forth. So limiting the amount of chemicals you put on and in your body can actually help your immune system. So... If you need help with that, reach out to me. And um, it's those four areas are very, very important. So what change can you commit to? What small change can you commit to? We talked last time about maybe giving up diet drinks or any sodas. Um, maybe it's um, you're going to walk, whether it's steps or amount of time. Um, it doesn't have to be big. It just needs to be consistent. So what are the changes you're going to make between now and January 1st to feel that you are ending up in a strong place versus feeling like a victim, feeling defeated and feeling hopeless? That We don't want that. We don't deserve that. We are better than that. So how can I help you? And I'm here for you. And I hope that you're here for me because I need accountability. I need to um, be very, very disciplined about this. And um, it, it takes a village to be well. So are you in my village? Let, let's all help each other, raise each other up and end 2020 strong. So I had said that I'm going to um, not eat uh, tortilla chips in the house. Um, that's still true. That's not going to be enough though, now that I know my numbers. Um, so I am completely eliminating um, the, the fast food. If I do end up having to go to fast food for whatever reason, it'll be a, a salad, even though it's not the healthiest of choices compared to the fried food and the French fries and so forth. That's still a better choice. So good, better, best. Um, the the grilled stuff the no it's not it's not helping me so 
um, that is going to be something for me. No fast food till I get my numbers back down. And even then, of course, it's not healthy for you. But moderation is usually good, but not right now. When my numbers are that bad, moderation is not going to help me. So giving up fast food is not that hard. Um, it requires planning my meals because that's one of the triggers for me. If I'm out running around and I haven't eaten all day and it's seven o'clock, I'm not going to wait, want to wait till I get home. So I have to have something with me in the car. So um, plan ahead. Meal prep is super important. Um, that is something I'm going to do better. So the other thing is I'm going to keep at that um, 10 minutes of movement um, a day and then 10 minutes of some sort of either stretching or strength training, something like that. So, um, you know, the typical advice is 30 minutes. I'm, I'm going to stick to my 10 and 10, so 20 minutes. Um, consistently. And so um, what, and then also the sleep, work on that to get, get more and better sleep. I don't really, um, stress is not a huge thing for me, but um, the other three obviously are. And, and the immune system. I feel, um, you know, eating junk food, sugar, white flour, all that, that um, weakens your immune system. So if you have allergies, please know that the more junk food, processed food you eat, if you're suffering from allergies and you're eating all that junk, that is making it worse. I know that sounds weird, but it's connected because if your gut is so busy fighting the fight with the processed foods and the fried foods and all that junk, then when you are hit with outside forces like pollen, your immune system has nothing left to fight it. So what you might have been able to just blow up, you know, just ignore or have a few sniffles is now a full blown sinus infection because of the junk you're eating or not getting enough sleep or being stressed. So it is related. So, just wanted to be vulnerable here, let you know I'm right there in the trenches with you. And if you have any advice for me, bring it. I'm, I'm open to suggestions and um, let's do this together because trying to do this hard stuff alone is, makes it even harder. So um, comment below, uh, what small consistent changes are you gonna make to ensure that you end 2020 on a high. Now, I don't mean that it's going to be the best ever, but just better than yesterday, better than the day before. So till next time, choose you, choose natural, choose now.